Hey guys, today I wanted to show you an updated version of my original Assetto Corsa server manager. So this is the Assetto Corsa server auto install and entry list manager. Just an updated version of the old one. There was a problem with the old one where the UI was really bad. Maybe just outdated, not bad. And also I didn't digitally sign the exe file which caused security flags. So learning from my mistakes, this new version addresses both those issues. I have compressed the file into an exe which is an installation. You can just run it simply and it's going to install and you'll be able to access the application. It also comes with an installation guide just in case you don't want to listen to the tutorial you could read through but most people don't read so I'm just going to give you this tutorial anyway. You can see if you double click the installation it's going to install but there is a glitch. Uh, the application is going to pop up once. You can close that to continue the installation progress. I'm not sure why that's happening. It's an Electron application and I'm still not quite certain about it but I'm working on that right now. Once the application is fully installed it will be an icon on your desktop. With that you can put it anywhere and simply open it. You can also delete the installation file if you wish. Once you open the application it should have the login page. So if you're a paid member of my Patreon, you'll be able to utilize this application. And it's in a very simple manner. All you gotta do is be logged in to Patreon through your browser, and you'll be able to press login with Patreon. And on the browser side, it will take you to the Patreon authentication, which will check if you're a paid member. And once that is confirmed, it redirects to my application, which gives you access. Once you're in, you have full access and able to manipulate servers as you wish. The first thing you want to do is add servers. So we'll go here and click browse. This will allow you to search for your actual server. When you do this, click on one and you load it in or you can click on multiple servers and you load them in and it's okay if you load the same server. I've checked for that. Press the add servers button to load the servers into the application. Once the servers are loaded into the application, you can go back and see your past servers and it will keep a log or rather a list that you can re-enter into the current list. This is helpful if you want to group servers together. So let's say I want to group these servers together. I would click them, load them into my current list. I would click save current selection and I would name it. And that way I can now load in that group automatically when I want to have it in here. And then I click add server and it will load them in. Once the server is loaded in, you're going to see the server card. And this has some helpful information like what track, how many pit boxes there are in that track, and how many drivable cars and AI cars you have in your entry list. Looking at the server list, so that's the car models, you'll be able to see your content.json file, which is your auto install. This is very helpful because you can see what cars you have. You could also see what links that are lingering. So cars that are not in the entry list, but are still in your download list. You can see which versions the cars are. By clicking the action menu, you can edit the URL and the version. There's a drop down menu to click a custom and you can add in a custom version and a URL to associate with that. You'll be able to find all these details in the model tab where if you use the actions menu, it'll open up a car menu for the specific car. Here you'll be able to see every version of this car and its download link accordingly. You'll be able to manipulate that per server or you can apply a version to all the servers that have been loaded in, making it very easy to update cars. Speaking about updating cars, I added a entry list editor. This is designed to add cars easily into the server and show very easily the amount of duplicates and if it's an AI or not. You can add in a car manually by typing in the car model name and designating what type of car type it is. And if the car is real and it's in your directory, then you'll be able to edit the skin. Now, you'll see the skin, but you also see optional suffixes. I haven't seen anybody actually do this, but there's different options and categories where you can limit or allow people to do certain things depending on what car they're in. So this gives you some examples as what options are available that you can select for a car. There's also duplicating a car, deleting a car, you can move a car on a list, and you can also edit an existing car. Now I added 
two more options where you can drag and drop a car. So this doesn't need to be in your Seto directory. It can just be a car that you're working on. Just drag and drop it into this area and it will read the car and automatically add it in. If you want it to be a driver car or AI car, designate that and then just tell it what skin to put. And again, if you want any limitations or extra benefits of that car, you can go in, find the car, click the edit button and change the skin so that you can edit the suffix of the car. I've also made a method to save the entry list into presets. So let's say you want to have a test or trial run for a certain entry list and you don't want it, you want to revert, you can just reload your test presets. Before you save an entry list, I want you to press the optimize button. This will allow your server to load faster by grouping duplicate cars together. This is a standard that should be practiced. You also can press the browse button and that will automatically take you to your Assetto cars. You can choose one or multiple cars to install into the entry list. Finally, you have your download button, which allows you to download the entry list so you can share it with other people. After you're done with all your changes, remember to save and it will give you an option to continue editing or just close. In the last tab, which is the downloads, this is a repository of all your content.json links. So every car that you've loaded in, it'll store the link so that you can understand which version and which links were with which. So you don't need a big spreadsheet. You can simply copy it from here and share it with another person and keep track. There's also an actions bar that will allow you to add a new version of the car. So I'm going to give you an example of how this can be very beneficial and how I can help you on this. You have, let's say, a version. I'm going to put Google as a test version. And let's say this is sets an example of a car that is not correct. The URL is wrong. It goes to a wrong car or maybe a bad link. If you press the verify URLs button, there'll be a pop-up that will go through all the cars on this list and make sure that that actual car file is valid. It's going to make sure for the car name and make sure that it's a valid file. So it will then composite a list of statuses being valid or broken, and then it'll update this downloads list accordingly so that you'll be able to see exactly what URLs you need to change, fix, and what is valid. Here it is at the end, it's showing two broken links for the specific test version and the 7.3 version that I put Google as the URL. So it understood that these weren't valid car links and that it doesn't even have a car at the end of that link. So mark it as broken. I want to show you something. If I take this car and I make a custom version for the one that's matching a broken link, I just want to do a test to show you. If a car has a broken link and you try to delete it, you're going to get some options because it's already inside of a server, so it has to do something. It's going to give you two options. One is to default to the version. So this means that it's going to go to the last most valid URL. So in this case, it would be 1.3. The second option is for a custom replacement and it will allow you to input a URL and a version number or lack thereof and save. If a car with a broken URL is not in a server and you press delete, it will just simply remove it from the list. Moving on to the next feature, there's an auto resolve where it will try to figure out all the links that are wrong, that you don't have a URL for and it will automatically go through your list and find matching URLs to fix it. The other option is to manually input all the versions and URLs that you want to have in the download links that you're missing within your server. These aren't always necessarily cars that are loaded in, but they are just links that are missing. And so this does its best attempt at fixing that issue. Moving on to the server cards, if you press on the open button, it'll go to the root server folder so you have quick access to your files. And if you want to access the server underscore config file, you can press the manage button. This is similar to my old one, except there's a few different changes. Within the track configuration, you're able to choose between three different formats, plain, CSP, and CSP extended. Choosing the CSP, you'll be able to look at your map and the CSP version number. This is found in a seto, in your settings, about, and then it's listed under here. The version number that's currently loaded right now is lower because I want them to be compatible with my server if they have a lower version. 
of CSP. Moving on to the CSP Extended, there's new features that I wanted to show you where it includes extended car physics, track physics, and hiding the pit crew. So you can choose any combination and have different features available through CSP onto your server. Using the search feature, you can actually search for your track and it'll automatically load all the track configs that you'll be able to choose from a list. If you have a custom one that's not presented, you can choose custom and put it in manually. Don't forget to scroll down and save the config. The rest of the settings are pretty normal that you would find in there, although I haven't really worked on the sessions. I'm going to upgrade the race 1, race 2, race 3, and they could be multiple races, so I'm going to upgrade that eventually down the line. This is perfect. Everything works here. The biggest issue is the weather tab. The reorder button and the remove actions do not work. I have to investigate why. It's been very hard to make it work, but I will in the future. Uh, for now though, you can add weather. Remember to save the configuration and it'll always reload all the information once you save. There's also a dark mode here. I'll work on this and tweak this. It's not really good yet, but I will try. And other than that, there's a logout one, which I was using for development, but I've just left it there for whatever reason. If you go into the top, there's a reload if the program crashes or you want to just reload it or go full screen. Here you can find all different socials. If you need help, this is all the information I got from the website of Aceto Server, and if you want to join the Aceto community, my community, click on that and join us today. I do hope you enjoy using this application and it makes your life easy. And if you have any questions or you want to have suggestions for more features, let me know in my Patreon or on YouTube.